Hey. Amy. Okay, this is what I'm, I'm having trouble with. I'm having trouble with these these churches in California, Hollywood, California, L.A. I'm having trouble with um, Dallas, Texas, Nashville. I'm having trouble with this. This is what I'm having what? You want some ice? Okay, this is what I'm having trouble with. This is what I'm having trouble with. Even though we come here, Emmy. Even go. What? What are my icons? Katrina happened. You know, Kat uh, Katrina happened. Okay, and a lot of people suffer the consequences of Katrina. Okay. I, I'm I'm having a problem. I got anger issues for real. I'm having a problem with these people who sit up here and say they part of the government. These these churches. These churches. Okay, these churches. And I have a problem with this. Why do we have to feel, because they had, like, earthquakes and floods, and they had, uh, in Texas, they had a flood. In New Orleans, they had a flood. In Tsunami, they had a flood. In um, China, they had a flood. Tokyo, they had a flood. And all these people had floods and, and all this stuff. Uh, Detroit went bankruptcy. They had all these problems, right? And... On the news, they was telling us that Detroit, uh, Kel Patrick's family, they saying Kel Patrick's uh, bankrupt the people, and he owed eight million dollars back to Detroit. And they're gonna lock him up. Now, I was down here during that time. This was in 2000 and, what year that was? Was it 2008? I think it was before 2008, Barack Obama was coming into office. And I think it was like 2009, they was calling the radio station. And they was asking, um, what's his name? Jesse Jackson. Um the radio talk show host, they was asking him about uh, what to do because they said the water company uh, was not uh, people at the water company and stuff like that, right? They said Kilpatrick's father was ripping people off in the water company. That's what they said. Now, Kilpatrick is, the rumor is, Kilpatrick is supposed to be linked to uh, Suge Knight. Suge Knight is Death Row Records. Death Row Records supposed to have like gang members. And a lot of people had, I guess when Kilpatrick, they said Kilpatrick, this is what was on the news. So my daughter, um, I was telling my daughter, I said a lot of people left Death Row Records, you know, before like Ice Cube, um, um, what's his name, uh, Snoop Dogg, Special Ed. It was a lot of people that were signing up for Death Row Records. And um, uh, I don't know if it, uh, 50 Cent or any of them, I think they Studio A or whatever. I, I had heard that Studio A, uh, Eminem, Owns, I guess these people own Studio A, Dearborn, uh, A Raps, you know, the A Rap, they call it A Rap City. But, um, I mean, I ain't never had no problem with Dearborn. I had a landlord that lived in Dearborn, Miss Mary, and uh, I was a good, I was a good tenant to Miss Mary. I ended up, uh, she, she'll tell you too, I was a good tenant, and um, uh, they was trying to say that, um, uh, don't, uh, my daughter was trying to get me to live in Dearborn or, or 
Rap, Grand Rapids. And I say, hell no, I ain't living in no damn um, Grand Rapids. I don't know who the hell used to live in, but excuse my French, but I ain't living no damn Grand Rapids. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so uh, I said, because I know uh, uh, Pam used to stay in Grand Rapids. Her and her people used to stay in Grand Rapids. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Big Mike and all of them used to stay in Grand Rapids. Um, um, join on... Uh, uh, then I had some people that I knew on Joy Road, they had Joy Road, and then it was um, Auto Drive. That's where the big hospital is that I was in. I was in um, the heart unit um, on Auto Drive, the Oakwood Hospital. And um, I think that's the hospital that Darlene was in, I think. I don't know. But anyway, I was in Harper. I was naming all the hospitals that I was in to Miss Cece uh, on, in a letter. So next thing I know, when I wrote this letter, uh, all of a sudden, Corey, uh, Corey calls me and said, Darlene is in the hotel and she's sick. And I said, what do you mean she's sick? You know, so Dawn called me and said she's going to take Darlene to the hospital. I'm like, take her to the hospital? What the hell? You know, so I said, I don't know what the hell going on. You know, you know, some, sometimes people just, you know, saying they... You know, it's shit when you're homeless sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Her her son took her to the, her 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 son kicked her out. Her son Kenny kicked her out. He was he was living with above Corey, Corey and Farrell. And uh they that's when they said, uh he called me. He said, I'm um I don't want mom living with me no more. And I said, Oh, okay. I said, I didn't ask her to leave, Kenny. I said, all I asked Darlene to do is to pay some rent. And that's what I asked her to do. She didn't want to pay no rent. She wanted to stay, her and Tay-Tay, you know. So I said, okay, I'm going to give you to September, you know, to pay some rent. Now, she moved in in um, May. And I let her go without paying rent. You got April, May, June, July, August. I paid five months to Jimmy for her to stay there, her and Tay-Tay, for free. They was not paying anything. You can call Jimmy up and tell him. And I gave Jimmy the money. Jimmy called me each month and said, I got the money, I got the money. Now, I paid the utility bill. Jimmy, kept, Ken, Jimmy called me and said, I got the money, Lisa. I paid for the rental car. Jimmy said, I got the money, I'm giving it to April and Rodney, okay? So, my family members, I don't know what's going on, Well, my family members keep saying that they helping me, they have helped me, they have fed me, and they had did all this stuff. I don't know. But all I know is that this type of behavior, no more, no more. Uh, this is, this is, what, it's, a, it's a hurtful thing. Miss Joyce was, hush. Miss Joyce came in, and Miss Joyce said she was at the hospital. I mean, Miss Miss Brenda. Miss Brenda was at the hospital when I tried to commit suicide. Miss Brenda was at the hospital, and I was I was trying not to hurt none of them, cause it's a hurtful feeling when you got people messing over your finances, fucking with your finances, fucking with your bank account, fucking with everything, you know. And you know what you're doing, and and then my older sister Dalma which I wanted to just beat her ass with a bat. She going to say, oh, you lost your mind. I said, I ain't lost my fucking mind. You lost your mind a long time ago in 2002. All that damn crack you done did. But I'm the only fucking one that sat there and believed in your ass and kept believing in your ass. I'm the only one in the family, just like Jimmy. I'm the only one in the fucking family that believed in you to, enough to give you damn money. Who in the family ever, you ever borrowed money from? $3,000, $2,000, you know what I'm saying? Just dropping shit on me, which you didn't have to pay back. Who in the family ever did that for you? Who? Who in the damn family ever did that to you? Uh, did that for you, you know what I'm saying? Thelma, Mary, and what? Oh, give it to her, um, Elijah. Who even in, who who in the family has ever paid their rent for them? You know what I'm saying? And what's 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 so crazy about this stuff? 
uh, T.D. Jakes was talking this and talking that. I said, okay, for number one, they lied to you. You know, he's he's talking smack to me, and I ain't did nothing to T.D. Jakes. Now, they probably came to T.D. Jakes and telling all these damn lies on, on me, but I, I even, I was helping motherfuckers in Nashville pay their damn bills. You understand what I'm saying? I couldn't believe that these niggas kept calling, you know, they kept coming on my page. And I was like, what the hell is going on? You know, then I help uh, these people in uh, Georgia. They said, give a donation. So I gave a donation to help the homeless. These damn Jamaican people, I don't know who the fuck they was, really. I Excuse my French. I don't know who they was, but these niggas was just like, I don't know if they was part of it. They was Catholic. I said... <laughs> These motherfuckers is crazy. So I'm I'm looking at I'm going to Dollar General and the Dollar General person comes and tell me, Oh, we can't do this and we can't do that. I said, What you mean? As long as I got my receipt, gotta get the money back. None of my stores. My thing is this. People I remember seeing as a little girl how people create a receipt. All they need to do is get one of those damn receipts from their store and copy that receipt. Make a duplicate of that receipt. All you got to do, that's why I tear, I, I soak mines and I tear mines up because if a person find your receipt and they take it back to the store, uh, and they, you know what I'm saying, they can hawk your stuff. So they found a way to sell your stuff without you even knowing. They make copies of your shit, of your paperwork. So I said, number one, I don't, I don't even, all my stuff, because someone had called me and said, do you own all your stuff? I said, yes, yes, I do. I own my furniture. I own all my stuff. I pay cash for all my stuff. So uh, the other person called me and said, do you, um, do you wish to do something? They said, and I said, no. You know, they said, would, do, would you like to make a donation to the policeman ball? I said, no. <laughs> I don't have any money, right? So uh, my daughter, the church took my daughter to a black and white ball, and I paid for that. I, you know, I, I paid for that. Um, Miss Linda and... Miss Brenda and all of them, so I paid for that. And then uh, I was paying my tithes. Then they said they was going to uh, Ohio, I mean Lansing, um, to J and J. Is it K and K? K and K Ministries with mines and stuff. So um, Kaya, Ashley, Lynette, and a couple of girls went. And Kaya said she had a good time. So, so uh, Kaya, I wrote this letter and I said, my daughter is on the praise team, uh, Miss Cece, and she's on the praise team. So Miss Cece said she'll get on the praise team. You know, she, I mean, she was a part of the praise team. She was part of uh, praise and worship. So they put it up online. They said the praise and worship, Cece Wine is a part of the praise and worship team. And they shared the story about how uh, she was helping, you know, uh, she was over the praise and worship team. So I said, oh, okay, you know, she's, she's doing good. So I was going to go visit the, the church, this one particular, but I had just came back. I had just came back from New Jersey. And then I was going to wait a couple of months and then go and visit the church. But I was waiting for a response from Miss um, Demet Demetrius. I was waiting for a response from her because they said, she said that she was the the uh, manager and the office manager or whatever, um, the manager of CC. So I said, okay, let me, I'm waiting for the response so that I can, you know, write again and, you know, I can go down there. So I didn't want to like pop up there, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to just pop up. So I said, if I'm on vacation, I'll pop up there, you know what I'm saying? If I'm on vacation down there. 
But other than that, I wouldn't, I was just going to go and visit the church and go into Dollywood. That's what I was going to do. But I wanted to, you know, I wanted to come in and uh, I want, I was waiting for an invite and stuff like that. So, so I told, so I told my, um, Emmy, put that down. So I told my uh, daughter, so I told my daughter, I said, well, Kaya, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we might have to take a trip down to, because they wanted, uh, Sharon wanted me to come to Florida, to live to Florida. I said, no, I don't want to live in no damn Florida. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, I said, I said, Sharon is crazy. Then first she told me to go to damn Philly. She said, well, go to Philly. I said, the hell? <laughs> Why are you telling me to go here and there? What the hell is wrong with you? So, I don't know if my sister was on fucking crack or what. I don't know what the hell. Because I know somebody was telling her to do some shit. So, uh, I know I, we already had cousins that's in Philly. So, I don't know if my cousin was in the damn studio or not. I don't know what the hell was going on. But, all I know is that I was telling her about North North. I said, I'm from uh, North New Jersey. My auntie is North North, and my other auntie is Orange New Jersey. I said, so I was telling them. I said, my mother, my grandmother people is from New York. My father was raised up in New York. And, you know, I was just basically telling her. I said, so you might know the people, some of the people, because uh, she... she I think she knows Hezekiah, Hezekiah Walker and all of them. I didn't even know Hezekiah Walker and them was in New York until um, he was on Oprah Winfrey show. And we watch Oprah Winfrey show all the time. This is like in the 80s. Huh? You need tissue. Can you go get her some tissue, um, Elijah? And we don't need no tissue. Okay. So I was telling, um, I was telling... What's her name? We watched the interview, all of us. Shelly lived with us then. And uh, she said, did you hear that interview with Hezekiah? You want some tissue? Okay. So I said, um, I said, no. <laughs> right? Um, she's saying tissue. Here. So, um, here it is. Here, um, Emmy, Emmy, here. Hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's a big girl. So I'm sitting over here and I'm sitting over here and Shelly was living with us at the time. And I, I um cause she used to always say, Did you hear about Whitney and Whitney having a baby? Nippy. So Donnie McClorkin, he he was mocking every damn thing I was saying. And I said, how do he know what I'm saying? What's going on? He put a mic in me or something? Man, what's the, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so so I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was getting scared at first. So I said, I said, damn, somebody got to have some type of spyware or something going on. You know, I got to find out what the hell going on. So just moving back to the Hezekiah thing. Hezekiah was on, if you look at all of when he, uh, um Oprah Winfrey uh, recording tapes. You will see the interview with Hezekiah Walker. It was a it was a rumor going around with Hezekiah Walker. And then you could see, but I didn't see that one. I just seen him having. He was going into uh, this concert. He was having this concert in New York, and that's the one I seen. But they said in the um, newspaper, in the newspaper. Um, What's it called it? Some magazine. They was discussing on Oprah Winfrey show. So they said, uh, Azekiah Walker, is you, Oprah Winfrey said, are you gay? He said, no, I live with my wife. <laughs> I said, I knew, I, I said, I knew they was going to lie on somebody. I, I knew, because as soon as you start getting big, here come a lie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, cause he was blowing up. He was blowing up. He was he was getting more videos out there with the church scene, right? And I said, now here, here, now watch it. Watch they, watch they jump him. They going they gonna get in and see all types of rumors about him. <laughs> and, and it was him and John P. Keaton. Um, they was blowing up. And um, who else was blowing up? Somebody else was blowing up at the time. I'm talking about the three uh, gospel artists. 
And no, no, no bubbles. Your mother coming to get you in a little bit. So we ain't going to do that. So, um, so Shelly at the time was still working for Whitney, the Houston's and the Brown. So I said, I said, Hey, Shelly, uh, when we going to go and meet Whitney? Cause she's always over there. Uh, Norm always over there too. So I said, when we going to meet them? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, I was excited. I was ready. So, uh, this, I mean, I had to been like 12 years old. I had to been like 12 when I wanted to meet Whitney, you know. And I think I was like 13 when I first seen Miss Cece and BB, you know, and I became fans of theirs because I didn't know they was like gospel artists. I thought they was just like, like sing about love all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. So um, next thing I know, it was a rumor. They said Whitney Houston is having a baby, and I said I don't believe that shit until Shelly come and tell me. You know. <laughs> so Shelly did tell us. She said, "Yeah." She said she's having the baby. You know. I said, "Oh, okay." You know. So I said, "Man, this is." I said, "That's good though," because I said she'd make a good mommy. You know, what I'm saying. But she was just so thin, like my. Now, she remind me, if you see Whitney Houston, you'll see my friend Robbie. Robbie Call. I, I, and I always tell Robbie, I said, man, you symbol, she symbols Whitney Houston. But from a, like, Whitney Houston only, she don't have full lips like Robbie. Robbie has, like, full lips. But I used to always tell Robbie, she looks, she symbols Whitney Houston, my best friend. So I would tell her that all the time. I said, you, you, look, you look like you can go for the looks of Whitney Houston. You know what I'm saying? I used to tell her that all the time. And because uh, she, when she, the way she dressed, you know what I'm saying? The way Robbie dressed. And she be, she be dressing and stuff. Now, uh, her son, I mean, not her son, her brother, Darnell. Her brother, Darnell. Now, he can pass for... What's the what's the young boy named the light skinned boy the actor? Donnell can pass for that that light skinned boy. Um, he got cat eyes. Donnell got cat eyes too. He, Donnell and Jean got cat eyes. Their name is Bridges though. So they um he can pass for the the actor the the one actor. So I say I say yeah he can he can really pass for them. He can pass for them. So they live in Georgia now, uh, the the kids, the kids and Dez. I think Dez is a preacher. I seen her online, oh, and which auntie, I didn't know. Um, auntie Lisa, mm -hmm. we, did you know I had a secret trip and I already went? Uh, yeah, Raylan uh, took you, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, Y'all yeah, went to Atlanta? Uh -huh, we went to Atlanta, Georgia. It was super, I mean, they had a few things that I didn't like. Uh -huh. You went to Six Flags? Did you go to Six Flags? Oh, okay. <laughs> huh? Yeah, Coca Cola. Mr. Coca Cola, yep. Mm hmm. And Bank of America is right, yeah. Bank of America right across the street from Coca Cola. The Coca Cola Company. And uh, the the lady, she I, uh, she stayed, I, I, I was sleeping on the side of uh, Subway, and the, Mr. Coca Cola's daughter came and sat next to me. Her name is Lisa, too. She said, these people is sucking up my life, and these people, <laughs> she do organizations. She's like a, a consulting um, firm, and she ended up, um, they, they told, they was, they, they told her, she said she had a car in Florida, and uh, they wouldn't let her get it in Florida, so she had asked her, she had asked her dad, can she, can she have the car, and I guess her boyfriend, Troy, was telling her uh, he'll fix the cars. He said her father gets the cars. Uh, we, I get the cars and I give it to her, and she I work on the cars and stuff. So they they nice cars. He showed me all the cars that he got her. <laughs> he showed me all the cars. So so Troy was trying to do a film in California. So this is Troy. So I said I said well what is the situation with you and Lisa? Because Lisa is saying that your ex-girlfriend or baby mama is getting in the way of your 
life, you know, y'all life or whatever. He said, my baby mama don't even know her. She said, my baby mama don't know her. And, you know, because she kept telling me this every time she seen me. But I really don't know the girl to, to like, join in with her to say, oh, that's wrong and it's wrong and it's wrong. So I told her, I said, if you feel as though that Troy is not doing this and not doing it, then you need to let Troy know. You know what I'm saying? She said, yeah, but his baby mama, his baby. And I was like, but wh wh what is the baby mama doing to you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because cause I was trying to, you know, sometimes you just never know when a person's head is just loose as a goosey. So um, I said, what is his mother, baby's mother doing to you? She said, she's just, she just wants to take over, and she's taking over our life, and she's taking over everything that that Troy does and take a so but Troy tells me Troy tells me that her, his baby mama make more than her <laughs> the baby mama make more than her so Troy ended up doing a project and her, she said her mother jumped in and took over the project and counted her out of the project so now it's like she don't get a cut of the project I guess the money that they made or whatever and she said, I don't, I don't think that is fair. And I'm, I, I'm trying to get a lawyer and this lawyer, I said, shit, good luck with that. Cause I've been trying to get a damn lawyer for years to get my damn money and royalties and shit like that. <laughs> so I said, I said, and these damn producers, Tyler Perry ass is right down here and I can't get no damn money. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> I said, Tyler Perry is right down here and I can't get no money. I can't, Tyler Perry know where I'm at and everything. I said, he, he know where I'm at and everything. And he ain't going to give me no money. You know, he, he, he know my ass is homeless. Tyler Perry sat right there in, in BP gas station, stood up. By, he was by a car. And he looked over the car. And he seen me. I was sitting right on the side of BP gas station. And he seen me. He, he seen me. And I seen him. You know, I said, yeah, that nigga is like. I said, and then I seen, um, what it says, the pains. I seen the father. The father was in the church, right? And uh, you know, you can tell he sprayed. He sprayed it here. And I said, um, I said, hey, that's the the actor. He's the actor. So I I seen the camera, the um, the person that be behind the camera. I seen him. I said, hey, I know you and stuff like that. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> I was spotting all of them, man. I really was. I was spotting all of them. And I said, um, I said, hey, I know you and stuff like that. And then I met Miss Crystal. I met Miss Crystal. Uh, Miss Crystal is, I think, a volunteer for the company or something. Uh, she's my sister helper or keeper or something like that. So she volunteers for that. And I met her, and she was nice. She was looking for, like, uh, talent. She was looking for the talent show and stuff like that. We we, we endured, um, listened to people on a, on a uh, mic night. Uh, what's it called it? Karaoke night, karaoke night, <laughs> and uh, this little girl, she did real good. Uh, now, as far as as this older girl, she was nice, but she was kind of vicious. You know what I'm saying? She's kind of vicious, and I said, no, nah, ain't nobody gonna put up with her. You know what I'm saying? I was, I mean, I I liked her singing and everything, but her attitude, you know, she. I said, nah. I said she ain't nobody gonna put up with her. She's she, she's she's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She she's really crazy, you know what I'm saying? So, um so I guess she was trying to uh say that she was she was having a baby or something. It was some girl was having a baby and I said I said, Why are you here? She said, because my my me and my mom is not getting along. And I said, Your mom kicked you out while you was pregnant? She said, Yeah and I said, well, shit, I don't know. I don't know nothing about this. <laughs> I said, "What you, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what do they want me to do, God? I don't I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? So this was like uh, Frank's family members was down there. And she had, a, this girl had a whole lot of damn kids. And I said, I said, God damn, she got a lot of kids. I said, now who can really help this girl? Because she had a lot of damn kids. You know what I'm saying? I said, yeah, I mean. I, I I could I wouldn't even wish that on my own. If my friends was a billionaire, I, I you know it takes a lot of money to sponsor a person with a lot of damn kids. You know what I'm saying? So I said I don't know. I mean her best bet is to probably get some food stamps. 
and you know what I'm saying, and get an apartment, like a two bedroom or three bedroom, and put some damn bunk beds in, on each wall. <laughs> And in her room, put like two dresses, one for them and one for her, and uh, put another thing of bunk beds in her room, cause she had she had at least like five six kids, you know. And I said, yeah, she. I said I don't know how she gonna make it, but she said she didn't have no money. Then this other guy, this other lady, she, she was nice. She had four kids. And I said, well, at least you got four, you know. <laughs> These people wanted me to help them. I said, I don't know. I don't know how to help y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I only got one child. That's her at the door right now. I only got one. <laughs> Ellie, I told you don't take them toys out no more. Didn't I tell you that? Huh? And you going to do it anyway? Oh, my gosh, your hand. Huh? Hi, Steve. Child, I've been trying to work on the thing no more. I told Charles already. Charles, huh? Yeah, Charles, uh, uh, about this um, about my toilet and my air conditioning. What's wrong with your air? Uh, oh wait, hold on. Did you touch that button? Hold on. No, that's that's herb, herbs. They, they ain't no good. Yeah, it do feel good in there. <laughs> Where are your meat going at? Huh? So I, just, I took some. I, I cooked the um the ribs and I just got the chicken. Only picked two up. The the spare ribs and the pork um thing. Only get I only got three. Come on, Elijah. Too much yeah, too much. I like it because it's cleaning you out. Hurry up! Love y'all. Heavenly Father, watch over in Jesus' name.
Okay. You know these they sit there. Uh what's the name say? So so I said they uh uh Laverne Lattimore's granddaughter uh big heavy set one Nene's daughter to my she called me a bitch she said bitch you ain't doing it yourself bitch you know and I said oh okay you want to call people bitches <laughs> you want to steal people shit and then call them a bitch I was, oh, okay I'm getting it now you know so she was working at Hardy's and uh she she called her she called her uh her aunt I mean, she called her sister, and she had some kids. So I remember her coming to, she was going to uh, City of Refuge. Uh, she, was at, she was at City of Refuge, and she took a class in um, culinary, Cordon Blue or something like that. Okay, she took a course there. And when she took this course, uh, what's his name? Mr. Robert was the, Mr. Robert... And you can tell he didn't know what the hell he was doing. I don't know who he was. But he 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 uh he was explaining about the job, culinary, you know, teaching a class or cooking class and he, he sitting over there I said so I stepped back and I stepped back and I said I said, uh so he looked. He said, Oh, and another thing, don't never use open flame on the spray, you know what I'm saying, 'cause the uh <laughs> The uh the aerosol um can the the can spray was all above the the stove and the flame you can see the flame getting up. I said you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna step over here because if that that can't get hot enough it's gonna explode and it's <laughs> you gonna have a mess. So um he so he hurried up and moved it and stuff. So you know he was teaching the class and stuff culinary school. And I said, yeah, they, they, they feeling their way. And you people, and so the girl said, the girl said, I used to have big, I used to, I used to uh, weigh stuff, big weight. So basically she was saying she used to be a drug dealer. Basically, I caught on, see, but that's why I tell people, don't never think that I'm that saved that I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but you're talking about street talk. I told Miss Cece, I said, I said, I have been to and from. Now, I told her in the letter, I said, but Miss Cece, I seen everything. I said, I have seen everything. I have, I have helped people. I have, my mom have helped people. I said, we help, you know, people that really don't have nothing and stuff like that. I said, I said, so he said, you know, a cheerful giver, you know what I'm saying? I said, I remember those words when I was a little girl and I wrote it in the um, letter. So I said, I remember those words, you know, helping people, you know, and God will help you, you know. And I said, God is God is so blessful and so merciful that he, he'll, he'll bless the ones that you think will never get blessed, you know what I'm saying? When people keep putting their mouths on people and stuff, you'll know that, God, you know, with with their mouth say, it's not the, it's not they, they their, uh, it's not they calling. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I said, I remember some of these young kids and how their mamas didn't want to be with them. They just used any excuse not to be around their children. You know, and they just wanted, they wanted a life. They had the babies, but they just didn't want the 
They just didn't want to stay at home with them, and I didn't. And half of them didn't even work. So I said, I said, I don't, I don't get how people can have children. And and I, you know, I wanted a lot of kids because I, I love taking care of my nieces and nephews. You know, my nieces and nephews, my great nieces and nephews. I love taking care of them. You know what I'm saying? Going out, and taking them to the park, taking them swimming, putting them on the miracle round, the the swings, and you know what I'm saying? Getting up at the middle of the night. Now that middle of the night thing, me being young, 13 years old, I have to, I had to like really get used to getting up in the middle of the night, you know, fixing a bottle, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm fixing a bottle. So, you know, watching other people's kids at the age of 13. So I said, I said, I did, you know, I do anything just to keep from, you know, getting in trouble, you know? So, uh, cause when your mother spank you, she's, she's was more like the rough person, you know, she's, she's more like the disciplinarian, um, uh, parent. My father, he was just, he just be like, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he didn't really, my mom would tell him things like, you know, yeah, she's, she did this in school and she did that in school. My, and my dad was like, well, you know better than that. And you, you know what I'm saying? And my, my mother would just look at my dad and just, you know, so I said, I said, you know what? I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do right because, <laughs> My, my poor father, I said, I, you know what I'm saying, he may be in a hell raiser, but I'm just saying, I can just imagine how my mom, cause she's a real quiet person, my mother, she don't, she don't say, she don't say too much, but when she get with her friends and she have a good time and they, they laugh, they joke, they sing, you know, and they always singing, always singing, every time, I mean, every, that's all you hear, just old school. And I'm like, okay, we gotta. We we used to get up early in the morning, whenever her friends had that uh, barbecue, whenever they having the barbecue outside, we had to get up early in the morning, and child, they they go and get that get that meat. So we used to getting up early in the morning, and stuff like that, heading towards the barbecue, getting up and cooking fresh food from sun up to sundown, just cooking, you know. So we, my, I watched my mama and her girlfriends do that, and my, like all my, my aunties and my uncles, I watched them do it. You know, they having barbecues in the backyard. You know, well, we, uh, we have barbecue on Saturday, so we had to get up in the morning, take the bus, all the way to Plainfield. <laughs> you know, we still tired, just fall asleep on the on the bus. You know, and I said, man. Cause getting the playing field, I think it's like a 45 from Newark. I think it's like a hour. It's like an hour and a half ride or something like that. But from Elizabeth, it's only uh, it's only like a 45, 45 minutes. But um, from Newark, it's like an hour and something a ride. You know, so yeah, going coming from Newark to Plainfield, whew. then you go to um, you get off at the bus. And then if you taking the train, you're going to take Penn Station, and then you're going to take it to all the way to to uh, to Plainfield. And then you're going to jump in the cab. You know, you got to check a cab. Check a cab, take you all the way down to Washington Ave. You know, so it was, that was only $5 to go in there. To get, get from the cab company to, because uh, they had the red cab, the yellow cab, and the blue cab. And uh, we would, I will always take the the yellow cab, because the yellow cab is the only one that really be around. <laughs> the yellow cab. By the time I get home, the yellow cab is there. Now, I don't see no red cabs and blue cabs, but uh, I would go, I would go get home from there, you know. And then uh, uh, coming from uh, going to Elizabeth, um, trying to get to Elizabeth, I said, I said, this is. Um, you know, uh, the Elizabeth, I was, I was trying to find me a, a place to stay in Elizabeth. And, um, uh, my cousin April was over housing, but she, I think she was over housing in Newark when I was little, you know, when we was little and her, her husband, Alan, um, I remember when April, <laughs> April was pregnant with her, uh, her first baby and she came over to my mom's house. My mom lived in 206 Orange Street, and uh, 
she she had the baby and I remember we went to her wedding and I re I still remember the gift that I gave April. I gave April uh we gave April matching uh uh champagne glasses for uh their the his and her glass um uh, for uh their uh, for their uh, wedding. And um I think my mom somebody brought them his and her robes or something like that. But uh I remember I did that for Ms. Ann. Uh, his and her robes for her birthday because she she's married so uh i brought <laughs> i didn't want i didn't want to leave him out you know so i brought her his and her kit you know so so i remember the gift that she had you know but um anyway but i remember these things but for my family i don't know where and uh what was going on but I know, okay, that's the brown sugar. I'm, I'm looking at it like, I know I put brown sugar in there. I was trying to figure out how that sugar turned white. <laughs> brown sugar. But um, yeah, I was trying to figure out what was what was going on with these people. You know, that's, that's you know, I, something must have really badly happened in New Jersey because either the uh, mayor, Cause they said Cory Booker, and I said, "Who's Cory Booker?" Cause they, I seen the, um, I seen the 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 logo. I seen all that stuff, but I looked at it and I said, "I asked my my sister. I said, who who is Cory Booker?" So the one guy, he, I was coming from City Hall because I want I need to go get my birth certificate, and I um. I need to go get my birth certificate. Now, Shan took my birth certificate. I don't know why Shan took my birth certificate, but for some reason, she took my birth certificate out of my bag. And I left my bags in Shan's room, in uh, the kids' room. And when I went to therapy, when I went to therapy, she uh, my, my birth certificate was missing. My birth certificate. So I said, where is my birth certificate? So... Uh, I went downtown and tried to get my birth certificate. And I said, well, how come I can't get my birth certificate? So I'm looking like maybe somebody is using my name and they don't want me to get my birth certificate. So I said, why would they take my birth certificate? So um, now I heard when I came out of my, um, when I went to the hospital down here in, in Michigan, uh, Ms. Ann was talking to some doctor in Annapolis Hospital, Oakwood Hospital. And she I was behind the curtain and she was talking to the doctor. And she said she don't know who she is. She thinks that she has a child and she thinks this and she thinks that. And I said, and I looked, I said, no, she ain't telling them that. Why is she telling them that? So I guess they were trying to say I got amnesia or some shit. I don't know. But um, she said, "Now you know what you got to do." I said, "I said, Miss Ann, I never turn away from God, even though. See, this is what I try to tell people. Even though you don't think a person has changed through the years, or a person has given their all, been given their all, and been praying for for some of the people, when God show you." That certain people is not gonna make it. You get to praying. You get to praying. You get to fasting. Uh, and this one particular time, my brother, my brother James, he came to the house. I was in my black wheelchair, and I was watching TV. He sat down on the couch, and he was talking to me. And right away. When he said what he said, I ain't going to tell you what he said, but I'm going to tell you this. When he left, I went on, I went in my room, and I started crying. And I said, God, if you can save him. I don't know why he is so eager to get into this church and, and 
You, I don't understand how people are so eager to get in the pulpit when they are not ready for the pulpit. I don't understand this. This is a dangerous, dangerous thing that they 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 doing. I just don't understand. So I said, I said, Lord, you know his heart. I prayed for him. I said, you know his heart. And you know when he, he'll be ready. So what I did was I left it alone. I put it in God's hand. And he came back again. And we were standing, I was standing up in the kitchen. And I was, well, I was holding on. So, so I said, I told her I was wiping my counter. And something flashed on me. And he came in and he was talking about how he think that, he said, I don't think, I don't believe that God has forgotten me. I don't think that God has, you know what I'm saying? I know that he knows I've been so faithful to the church and I've been, you know what I'm saying? And I said, I said, do you know sometimes God knows what's right for us. He knows when to open up the door and he knows when to keep the door shut. I said, you got to think about Noah. God knew what was in Noah's heart. That's why he closed the door. God closes doors and don't open them until he prepares a place. Jesus said, I'll go away and prepare a place. So don't you think that God is going to prepare something for you to have? So I said, God knows we, we're faithful to the church. You got to you gotta recognize that Jesus was faithful to the church. But the church was not faithful to God. So it could be the other way around. And a lot of people don't realize this. So I was trying to make my, my brother see this. When God see a good prophet and God see a good worker of the gospel, he does not want you to mingle in with the spoiled. And my brother, he didn't understand that. And he, all he wanted to do was just hang out with the big dogs. That's all he wanted. And I said, don't you know God knows what's best for you? I said, he will prepare a church for you. He prepared one for Jesus. And he prepared one for the disciples. And he'll prepare one for you. So I didn't understand how men can say that they love God. And they don't trust him. To love him is to trust him, you know. And I didn't understand this. I didn't understand so many men wanted to be in with the church. And I said, God prepares the church for you, not you prepare for the church. So they had it all backwards. I didn't understand that. So I said, God never let Jesus down when he knew the church was not you know he the church was not faithful to God so would God have his prophet serve in a church that's not faithful to him how would he get the glory out of that you know so he prepared a church for Jesus he prepared the church for himself for a church to give him praise. He prepared a church out of the disciples to lift up the name of Jesus. So why would God put you in a church if you say you want to serve God and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why would God put you in a situation where that day is not safe serving Jesus Christ? So I didn't understand that. So I, I told it to him that day. That was in 2007. Then I came back to visit. Uh, no, I came back uh, to get my daughter. And and we had the same discussion. And this time he seen it. He said, no, not you. He said, everything you said was right. And, you know, and things doing better in the church. He still was serving the church. I said, you still in that church? <laughs> 
I said, he, he, he was still in the church. I couldn't believe it. So uh, I said, I said, wow. I said, who? Child, who? That's something. So <laughs> I could, I couldn't believe he was still in there. So uh, I, this was since 2006, and then here it is was 2000, and it was 2010, going on to 2011, right? September. So I thought he had, I thought he had picked up and went to another, you know what I'm saying? Opened up another church or something, you know, got the building himself and. You know what I'm saying? Trusting in the Lord to help him that he'll find a way or find a financial way to open up a building. That's what I thought he was. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's good to depart from something that's holding you back from giving God his true praise. And it's just better for you to depart from it. He, so if God say he prepared for place and God departed Jesus from the church to prepare a place for him to be you know, so that he could be the shepherd over that household, over that church, then you got to know that God sometimes, he takes you away, he departs you from these things, because if he, if he know that he's not going to get the glory out of man that's already there, and then man ain't trying to have you give God the glory, he's, he's going, he said he separates you, that's what the word means, he said he'll separate you from the rest. So I didn't understand why he was trying to knock down the doors to get up in there. They, they, child, they, they will trip over their own selves to get up in the pulpit. So I said, I said, Lord, I just don't understand. I, 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 I said, I don't know. I said, you, you know, you're gonna have to probably give me another insight of what is it? What, what, what is it? I mean, is it some type of? I mean, what is it? I'm trying to figure it out. So uh, the one guy, he said, uh, the one pastor, uh, Pastor Brown, he said, oh, God, just helping you. And I said, uh, I'm, I'm not in the pulpit. You know, I, I looked around and I, and I said, no, I don't, I don't get in the pulpit. I said, I'm not in the pulpit. So uh, he said, Minister Orr. He didn't want to call Minister Orr, Minister Orr. <laughs> I said, well, that's her title, Minister. I said, is your name Minister Or? She said, yeah. I said, okay, do you preach at Bethel? And she said, yeah. And I said, I said, do you play the piano at Bethel? She said, yeah. I said, oh, okay, so her name is Minister Or. You know, so I, I, I said, well, God say, you know, honor the name that is given. So uh, no disrespect not to honor so I called the minister or I, she said her name was minister or so she, she, she preached at Bethel, Bethel something, some church around the corner from us. <laughs> but she was just the organ player at uh, Gateway. She wasn't the, she wasn't the minister there at Gateway. So, um, but uh, Pastor, Pastor uh, John was the reverend there. I don't understand how they have reverends there. What is the difference between a, a reverend and a minister? Is the well reverend, minister? I don't know. Is is it is the minister? Let me see. You got reverend, minister, and deacon, right? Those three, reverend, minister, and deacon. I don't know. That's why I ain't in the pulpit. <laughs> to God, show me a little bit more. <laughs> I'm not, in the, I'm not in the pulpit, but I wouldn't go in the pulpit. And, you know, I would teach in the class or whatever. You know, open up a class. But other than that, I would never be in the pulpit. I believe in women's um, preachers and stuff. I do, but uh, you got to realize God's first woman preacher was Mary. Mad I mean, Mary, um, Jesus's mother, not Mary Madeline, but uh, Mary. You know, if you really look at it, <laughs> Sarah didn't do no preaching. You know, what I'm saying Rebecca didn't do no preaching. You know, Elizabeth didn't do no preaching, but he or she, but she celebrated though. She celebrated with Mary, and they two cousins. But if you look at the first ministry of women ministry, Mary was the first one started the women's ministry. If you really look at it, you really, 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 really look at it. Cause Mary Madeline, Jesus saved her from being stoned by the the community, the church want to stone everybody, the church. <laughs> you know, Mary Madeline and and then Jesus said, Who 
whoever has not sinned, throw the first stone. See, everybody sleeping with everybody, and everybody doing this, and everybody doing that. So the church wanted to stone the very one that they were sleeping with. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that something? So Jesus, see see how Jesus didn't have to go? And uh, see how Jesus didn't have to go? And look in their houses and look in their windows, look on their grass and say, you know, <laughs> I told people, I said, you're going you gonna to wish that you grew your own grass one day. One day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's hard to grow other people's grass. You know what I'm saying? And you got to get familiar with your grounds. And when you're familiar with your grounds, then it's more easy to grow your grass. If you ain't familiar with the grounds, you're going to catch hell. You know, so I try to tell people, when you're not familiar with something and you're trying to figure it out, call for help. But if you if you been doing this so long, you know, you don't need help. But everybody wants you to be codependent on help all the time. Help. He said, look where your help, uh, help come from. <clears throat> help come from the Lord. So if God, if see, you see where Noah help came from? You know, Noah said, well, where am I going to do such a thing, God? And where, where am I going to get such a, you know, such things to 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 build this boat? You know, Noah probably thought God was crazy. Noah probably thought his own self was crazy. I hear him voices. <laughs> he said, Noah, I need you to build a boat. <laughs> and you will call, and I will call all of two of animals that there is into the boat, Noah. You know, just imagine Noah probably said, that you, God? <laughs> What did what did I do to deserve this? You know, <laughs> so I say, oh man. <laughs> no, if I say, oh man, <laughs> probably called out to the wife, hey. <laughs> but just imagine a single, you know, just imagine a single person. You know, Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, Jonah. Just imagine what Jonah had to go through. God telling Jonah he got to help somebody that just got in and destroyed his life. <laughs> destroyed, destroyed his people's life. Destroyed his family life. You know what I'm saying? God sending Jonah in there to help a bunch of people because God was going to kill them. God was going to kill all of them, right? <laughs> so I guess he said, let me, let me test Noah's, uh, let me test uh, Jonah's heart, you know what I'm saying, so, he's because he said he loved God, so Jonah had to go in there and tell the people in Nineveh, you know what I'm saying, to stop doing what they're doing, God is going to strike you down if you don't stop, because they were doing all types of sin in the city, God don't like sinful cities, so he he go around destroying them, right, so uh, no, uh, uh, Jonah came, he was on his way, there, but he he made a detour. He said, "Bump that! I'm going to chop him." <laughs> Noah was trying to run away from God, and God God followed Noah. Uh, 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 Jonah, Jonah. I'm saying Noah. God followed Jonah, and Jonah got into this boat, and he went down in the bottom, took a nap, you know. So they done sailed the sea so many times. That everything went smooth, except about this one particular time. Jonah was on the boat. So the guys asked, you know what I'm saying? They sailed off and stuff, and they ran into a storm. And then when they ran into a storm, they said, hey, we ain't never, you know what I'm saying? This 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 sail always go good. What, what's going on now? So uh, I guess Jonah hold, heard the, uh, the commotion that's going on up there. And the person said, hey, who, you know, we got that young man down there he the only one got on the boat and then Jonah came up and said hey throw me over on the boat he said because you know y'all you storm is because of me so he threw him over the boat and, and God called the fish to eat him you know and then he died in the fish stomach then uh well basically you might as well say he drowned and when he drowned you know he called God from the depth of his soul he said okay God I'll do what you tell me to do so I did the same thing when I was on the floor and I knew I died, I said, God, I'm going I'm to live for you. 
from now on <laughs> and God let me back up. So <laughs> that's that's like in the belly of the of fish, <laughs> you know. When God when God saved you from the belly of the fish, boy, I'm telling you. So that was the same thing. <laughs> I died. I literally died. So um so uh my my sister said, Yeah. Uh she said, uh the uh, Catholics don't think that you you should cheat death and stuff like that. I said, I said, how can how can the Catholics say say that and God Jesus raised uh um his name uh, Lazarus from the dead and he raised a little girl, a little twelve year old girl from the dead and he raised the sick up from the wall. So how can how can they believe that if Jesus did all that? God did all that. He said, I've done nothing on my own but the works of God. He said he was telling them it wasn't him. You know what I'm saying? God worked through Jesus to raise the dead. You know, so they said, how can... Yeah, so I asked my sister. I was upstairs in her apartment. I said, how can, how can they believe that? You know, if, you know, I said... If I survived the torment of death, and you know what I'm saying, so I said, how can they believe that? But she, she said, she says some of the people believe that that's not true. And I said, well, they'll find out when it happened to them. <laughs> that's all it took. <laughs> when they get in trouble, they find out when who they gonna call. It better not be Ghostbusters, honey, cause ain't, ain't ain't no ghost gonna ain't no only ghost gonna come come to their way is the devil, you know. So uh, God was with me. He was with me the whole time, you know. Showed me some things. Showed me darkness and light, and uh, he was with me on both. But God, you know, God was with me on both. So that's when you know that you have you highly favored. But when you go see the light in 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 darkness and God ain't what you want either or you know you you in trouble that's telling you you better get your life together you know what I'm saying God's showing you something God trying to tell you something get your life in order but it's just like the man he he woke up he died and he woke up in hell and he thought he you know he thought Jesus was gonna meet him Jesus ain't meet him but see that's that's why I tell people stop believing in all this stuff and believe in the true living God He's a true living God. Anytime God be with you in darkness and light, he with you. He going to be there. He said no one can snatch you. So if death couldn't snatch me out, hell couldn't snatch me, and he wasn't ready for me to come home and to rest. So <laughs> if they couldn't they couldn't snatch me to do either or and God put me back, you know, gave my gave me breath again so that I could live and rise up, then it ain't you you some telling you something need need to get in your heart and say, I need to straighten my life out. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people, I'm a witness too. I am a witness for Jesus. I'm a witness for Jesus. So it don't matter if people don't believe me. It don't matter. You know, some people say, well, let's share your story. Let all of us share the story. I said, no, nah, some of y'all seen hell and y'all didn't see the light. You know what I'm saying? They're, but they'll sit there and lie and say they don't see the damn light. <laughs> Knowing that's a lie. Because if you read, you read in Leviticus, it'll tell you what you're going to see. It tells you when you die, you know. So Leviticus explains that. Leviticus and Exodus, the two books that explains everything about life and death. So that's why I tell people, I say, I say, I don't get it. <laughs> so, so I say, I don't even, I don't even care. You know, I already know I'm going to be, I already know I'm one of his favorites. So I'm good. That's why, that's why I try not to do wrong the people like stealing and lying and cheating and you know, and stuff like that, you know, having being an adulterer and, and um, a whoremonger and stuff like that. God forgive you for all that stuff, but when you're forced to be a whoremonger, and you're forced to be a prostitute, and you're forced to do these things, God forgive you anyway. God, you are God most precious gem. You really are, because a lot of people was forced. To, into prostitution, a lot of people was forced into sexual activities. You know what I'm saying? And 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 those are the people that we have to really let them know that God loves you. You know what I'm saying? We got to let them know that. You know what I'm saying? Because these people, these are the ones that's sitting around 
and saying God don't love them. But God do love them. God knows what they went through. God knows the heartache that they went through. He knows their pain. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he loves them. You know, and, and that's the one, that's the message that we have to push out there. You know what I'm saying? Rather it's boy, girl, uh, child, adult, you know what I'm saying? Because some people can't come out of that. You know what I'm saying? I had a sister that couldn't come out of her past. You know what I'm saying? Her past haunted her over and over again, over and over, and it drove her crazy. It drove her crazy, you know, and she just stopped caring. She stopped caring and she gave up. You know what I'm saying? But I know my sister was strong to the end. She was strong and she she was strong in the word. You know, she knew the word. She knew Jesus. She was strong at the end, you know. Uh, my sister Tina, she was strong. You know, I, I counted on joy to, to have her as a sister. And I I, I, I was glad to have my, my sister share, you know. But, you know, sometimes jealousy, you know, those Capricorns, they get jealous all the time. And that's what you, you you don't want, you know, that's the one that you don't want to do. Look at my eye jumping. Look, they make my eye jump. See, look. Yeah. Look. See, look. Oh, they stopped. <laughs> it's making my eye jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to bust their asses. They want me to go to the hospital. I ain't going to no damn hospital. They gonna do they gonna they gonna whatever they gonna do, they gonna do it. Don't think I'm out here doing something strange and and, and, and weird. See, T. Jacob say I'm doing something weird and strange. He, he just getting busted, that's all. Rather you NASA or whatever, your ass got busted. Rather you're a teacher or a diploma or whatever. You just got busted, that's all. <laughs> you know, because people, people sit there and sneak around and spy on you. You know what I'm saying? He said, oh, you just got to suffer with the rest of us. No, I don't. Trust me. I ain't got stuff with y'all. You know, and, and I like TD Jakes. You know what I'm saying? But when you owe a lot of people, when you owe someone that has... Uh, I remember Donna, this white lady, said... Uh, this white lady, she said... Um, this, this white lady, Donna, she came in and she said... Uh, so and so need to get his act together because what's his name? He helped him and stuff. I said, I said, I said, I said, Miss Donna, I said, let me ask you a question. Cause all these little gay little boys, they got a lot of gay little boys. They are walking around with gay little boys, and I said, them boys wasn't born gay. Somebody been molesting them damn boys while they been in these damn hot, uh, foster homes and shit like that. So that's why them little boys is gay, and they, these people would sit there and adopt these little boys. And these little boys is gay because they've been molested all their life. You know, and their mamas and daddies dead. And these little boys go into these homes and these foster homes and get raped. And that be coming out gay. So I told Miss Donna, I said, look, Miss Donna, I said, them boys don't owe nobody nothing. I said, because they should have left them boys in the street. She said, oh, they just not grateful. I said, they very grateful, Miss Donna. I said, y'all just want too much from a little bit that you give, you know. And I said, I, said, I don't think that y'all, you know what I'm saying, because cause, y'all had to be delivered from alcohol and drugs, you know what I'm saying. And these people uh, sit here and and tell them. So, so I said, I said, when people give you an opportunity, because I had thanked uh, Mr. Um, Bruce. I had thanked Mr. Bruce. And now this was a guy, I don't know if this, I don't know if this guy is gay, because they said Pastor Bruce. So I didn't know if the guy was gay or not, and he passed her a gay church or not, I didn't know. But some some girl, some lady came and she was, I don't know if she was gay. I don't know if she was covering up for the gays or not. I don't know. I don't know what type of 
community it was, but I think it was a gay community. So, <laughs> so in City of Refuge, I think all the people was gay. So I think I think it's it's like you know how you go into a a place, and you you think that it's normal, and then you find out it's not. You say, damn, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of gay people up in here, you know. So you, you either you they are they either Muslims or gang bangers or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't I didn't know. So uh, I said, man, I said, but I don't I don't have no problems being around them. I've been around them all my life, you know. But it was kind of I said I hope none of them try to make a move on me though. <laughs> I was praying. I was praying for that. <laughs> I said, I hope they don't try to make a move on me because I, I don't lay with the same sex. So, I, uh, Miss Chris said, Miss Chris said, uh, have you ever been raped before? And I said, huh? So this this one girl, she scared the Jesus out of me. And I said, oh Lord, I said they done drove the people crazy down here, God. I said, can you just cover them and cover their minds and. Put them right, put them back in their right minds, and stuff like that. Cause they had this one girl, she was following me, and I said, "Why this damn girl following me?" I was scared, I was scared out my damn mind, and I said, "Why this girl following me?" So this other girl, she she was saying, "No, we, uh, I think it's feed my lambs, little lambs, or something like that. Feed my little lambs." And I've seen the girl, and she was nice. The little girl, she was short, little girl, and she was like, "Ha ha!" And I was like. And I said, okay. So she had a little girl. She said, come live with us. I said, oh, no. I said, because you, you going back and forth. <laughs> you know, one minute she was she was okay. And the next minute she was like, you know, but she was cheerful, though. And I told her, I said, I said, you'll, you'll take care of me? She said, yeah, I'm going to take She said, we going to take care of her. We going to take care of Miss Lisa, ain't we? <laughs> See, her, do her little daughter is so cute. And I said, I said, I said, I believe you. I said, but nah, I said, I ain't living with nobody else no more. <laughs> I said, I'm going to live by myself. You know, they wanted you to do the share thing. And I said, oh, hell no. I said, you know, uh, we can't do that. My brother Brian was in that situation and um, her shit. He was, yeah, I, I was praying that nobody hurt him. I was praying that no, he didn't hurt nobody. I said, shit, my brother will cut your ass. <laughs> you know, he said over here, shit, talking about share and take. And I said, what type of damn place Bishop Ellis in the morning? So we need to, I need to call downtown or something. Because I have a friend, uh, she, she'll go in there and check it out. You know, I said, what type of damn house is this? So I told my brother, just bring your ass home, boy. Come on. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, what type of damn house is that? You know, I said, don't let me have to visit um, Greater. I told, because uh, Brian, no, Erica and them, the Culbersons. We know the Culbersons. So I said, shit, let me, let me give Erica a call. Maybe Erica can call, um, maybe she can call the, pre the pastor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I didn't know what the hell to do. But I just told Brian, bring his ass home. He said, them damn people is crazy, Brian. You know? And I, I don't know why Brian like to hang around with crazy ass people. You, I mean, you got me. I just don't know. I don't know why. You know? I just don't know why. And I told, I told my... I told my niece the same thing. I said, I don't know why y'all hang around with crazy ass people. You know what I'm saying? Bad enough, y'all y'all just is half crazy. And then you're going to bring another crazy ass person around us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got two damn crazy people we're dealing with. So I said, I don't know. I don't know about these damn churches. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I believe in, in refuge. I believe in that. I believe in saving people. I believe in helping people. I really do. But when when when, when all this fell, you know, got to call on Jesus. I, I, I told my my family members, I said, I don't know why y'all like hanging around crazy ass people. Brian kept bringing them damn people in the house. I said, boy, if you don't stop bringing these damn people in my house, you know, you know, he bringing them in the back, just giving them a damn tour of the house. I said, oh, Lord, Jesus, help me. I was so happy I didn't get my bedroom set yet. 
Cause I was gonna go. I was that was my next step. Get the bedroom set and some TVs in my house. And uh, uh, I was showing Becky the house. I said I'm gonna. Um, I said I'm not finished decorating the house, Becky. And cause Becky said, "What you been doing?" I said, "Nothing. Trying to get the house in order. Trying to get the house okay and stuff." You know, I just moved again, and, you know, I was going to give her the floor model TV, and I said, I got rid of my big TV. I, I let Corey buy it off of me. Corey said, let me get it for five. I said, shit, Corey, I paid 1100 damn dollars for this TV. You can't give me at least seven? She, he said, no. Nah. But, see, he wanted damn eight for that damn car, that little breaking down uh, buster car he had. Tell my dad, he said, that's a classic. I said, shit, you want $800 for that damn car for Rodney? You know, but couldn't give me seven hundred dollars for that damn flat screen TV. So I told Jimmy kept saying I gave it to the church. He kept lying. On, he kept lying on the church and shit. And then called Darlene and told Darlene. I said, Darlene, that's not the TV. I don't know what the hell Jimmy talking about. Jimmy can't even remember. I said, Jimmy. That's not the damn screen. Because he looked at Ms. Ann's TV on her uh, fireplace. And he said, you know, that's where the TV at. I said, that's not the damn TV, Jimmy. <laughs> he, looked on, he looked on the um, thing, the fireplace. And he seen the uh, 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 TV on the fireplace. And I said... That's not the TV, Jimmy. I said, remember, it's a floor. Jimmy went with me to get the damn TV <laughs> at ABC Warehouse. I said, it's a floor model TV, um, uh, screen TV. So <laughs> he said, he called Darlene, his crazy ass. He called Darlene. See, sin to make you do that. They And they are part of the church and crazy. So uh, <laughs> they in the boo pit. This is crazy as two dumplings. So I said, I said, I, I, Darlene said uh, Jimmy kept calling Darlene and I was at the table and Jim, Darlene said uh, Jimmy Jimmy said uh, uh, I should go and get the TV back and stuff like that and I said what TV Darlene? I said no I gave them the little TV for the children's ministry for the, like their movie night I gave them that you know, and uh, he said, he told Darlene I gave them the flat screen TV. And I said, no, I didn't. I didn't give them the damn. And then I told Corey, I said, Corey, would you tell your damn mama where's the damn flat TV at? He said, it's at the house, ma. And he said, she, she gave it to me. And I said, I said, okay, thank you. You know, like I'm damn crazy, you know. That's why I say these damn older siblings, boy, I tell you, put them on medication. I think they all need to be on some Alzheimer's medicine. You know what I'm saying? Just out of their damn minds. Just driving us crazy. You know what I'm saying? Driving the young ones crazy. You know? When he's... When... I kept telling him... So, uh... He didn't have recollection that... He kept saying... Uh, then Sting... Sting said... Jimmy sold that house and uh, without my permission or whatever, he said. And I said, what the hell? you you?" I said, Sting, you signed the paper too. It was me, you, uh, Jimmy, and Mr. Blimmer. All four of us had our initials on that damn paper. You know, and then they were trying to say, uh, if that was if you paid us the hundred thousand dollars, and I said no, it didn't. It said Mr. Blimmer said Mr. Blimmer said I said uh, the closing price that we asked, and he said all they gotta pay is ten. And he said yeah, that's all you gotta pay is ten, right? Ten thousand dollars, right? And Mr. Blimmer said yeah, right? See, that's how he thought he was gonna get me. So he said the closing price. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. So I brought the house for ten thousand dollars. Mr. Mr. Blimmer put it in the thing, but he he put it in the in the clause. So that let you know Mr. Blimmer drawed up the. He said he drawed up the contract, but I think Jimmy drawed up the contract himself. And what ended up happening that he he ended up saying purchases of ten thousand dollars. That was the word. So I said, see, he done he done tr See, he tried to. Well, God meant it for, you know, he meant it for evil, but God meant it for good and for on my behalf. <laughs> $10,000. So I brought this motherfucker for $10,000. <laughs>
paid up. I paid it in full. <laughs> so, um, so I couldn't believe that uh, they, they, you know. So he he called himself renting a house out to Marianne and her mother and uh, the church. The the church. Uh, I don't know what church Marianne went to though. I don't know if it was Bethel. I don't know, but um, these 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 people supposed to be um, um, what's his name? Um, these people are supposed to be uh, Deirdre Hatton's family, and he said uh, Marianne's gonna rent the house out, Lisa, and I I said, what you telling me for? You know what I'm saying? You you said it was okay. I gave you 30 day notice. I moved out in 30 days, and I didn't. I cleaned the house up and everything. So she, when she came in, she moved right on in to a clean ass house. I had the floors done. I had I had just repaint. I just repainted the. I just painted the house. So she had everything fresh. Then he took the equity out of the house that I collected through me paying the, the house note, the house, the the mortgage. So he took the equity out of the house and got. And, and fixed the garage and stuff up. I went by the house, but I had planted the flowers and stuff. Me and Thelma planted the flowers. So we kind of fixed everything up, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I just didn't understand how the hell he got away with that, you know. So, uh, But Shan came, and she took a picture with James and Michael. So I guess James and Michael was renting out the house at that time. I guess they got rid of uh, Marianne. And Shan went in there with James and Michael. So Shan came downstairs, you know. Shan, I mean, Shan came down here. And uh, I don't know what happened with that, but it, I, I told Shan. Shan knew about the, uh, everybody that came to uh, Michigan knew about the ramp. I had built the ramp, and then I had the Christmas party at the house. So everybody knew about the ramp. They knew that I spent my money doing the ramp, you know what I'm saying? So... So Jimmy didn't put a lot of money in that that house, you know what I'm saying? But he was he was he was trying to he was trying to yank it yank it out. But uh, but see, but you see how, but you see how uh, you see how money, the love of money, can make you do some evil things. The love of money is the root of all evil. But you see how you can a man can be evil towards a woman who is supposed to appreciate a woman. And who's supposed to have respect for your el your you know say your your loved ones your loved ones you, if you love your loved ones see people say family all day, but when you when you sit around and you finding a way how to jip your family and how to rob your family see you ain't gonna rob on the outside you are gonna rob on the inside when you figure that out and you you keep saying you go on the interviews to my I got family and I love my family and I'm taking care of my family and I'm doing this for my family and I'm doing you know what I'm saying everybody everybody putting the responsibility on them everybody depending on me so I so I told Miss Cece I said well my mother always taught us to take care of each other I said I can't I can't hate her for that you know what I'm saying I can't hate her for that and I I love her for that because the simple fact that people is not going to love you because of what you do. You know what I'm saying? Jesus was not loved because of what he was doing. But God loved Jesus. So sometimes God, you got to count on God's love and not man's love cuz man's heart is man's heart is a a device of especially if they love the the things of the world. If they love the things of the world, meaning that worldly. I'm not talking about godly like living godly you know so if you do worldly things you're gonna love things of the world and that's what he said about marriages he said marriages love the things of the world and single love the things of god so now you see a married couple and is doing the study on a single you know and how a single can honestly sit here and love the things of god and do the things of god and how the marriage can sit there and do the things of the world, you know. So yeah. So you see in two different lifestyles. Two different lifestyles. Yeah. <laughs> two different lifestyles. So yeah. Oh my god, my butt hurt. So um but like I said, when you um uh, when when um when people 
do things the wrong way, it's just best to apologize and move that jar over. It's best to it's best to apologize because they they see what I'm doing. I'm looking at that. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, they gotta you know hopefully they apologize. Um, so that's why I said when they um, um, the one guy uh, he he's a smoker. So I guess they were doing a campaign about the smoking thing. He said, "Man, it's funny how a person can." Um, Rest their souls in, a, in another person's. Uh, so I guess switch spirits or whatever. I said, you can't switch spirits. You can't join spirits with other people. You know, um, that's he said you're gonna love one and hate the other. So guess what? They 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 love one and they hate the other, which means that if you got a, a Jesus spirit, they gonna they gonna love one and hate the other. Mean that if you got a, a evil spirit in the Jesus spirit, you guess what? Which one they gonna love? They gonna love one, meaning that they not gonna love all the time Jesus spirit in you. They gonna love the evil spirit in you. So when God tests, He said, "Try the spirit by the spirit." He said, "Let's see which one they like." So they get a, a response from this spirit. And then, then let's see this spirit. Let's see what which spirit they're going to like on this spirit, right? And let's say they got, yeah. that's one thing when you have fruit in your house, <laughs> fruit and vegetables, and get them flies in your house. Okay. Uh, so when you, when you're, you're, when you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, he say, let's see how much audience does this wicked spirit um, get and how much does this nice spirit get. So so the attention, so they said, so they said, try the spirit by the spirit. And then uh, this one lady said in the church, she said, yeah, your eyes roam. And I said, okay, the eyes roaming. I said, what did that mean when your eyes roam? So the Bible do speaks about roaming eyes. So I said, hmm. So I said, okay, well now what does that supposed to mean? Roman eyes. So I looked it up. And it basically means that you have to uh, be careful not to look where uh, lust, they said lustful eyes. And so I looked it up. And um, I guess that's how the church um, view you on uh, your ministry, try to get your ministry going or whatever. So they watches you. I don't know if the Catholic Church watches you, or the uh, cool ministry watches you, or the Baptist, because you got three. I don't know nothing about the other ones. Uh, all I know is like I think Rob Parsley is the Baptist over the Baptist. I think um, is Joe Austin the Baptist too. Uh, see, my arm is hurting. It's probably Clefflow. Cause he he scratches his arm. I met a couple of uh, people who scratched their arms and stuff. I'm not on drugs, y'all. So they they gave me a shot, and like I said, see, they gave me a shot, and nine out of ten, like I said, um, it's a it's the tracker that's moving in my arm, you know. So and sometimes it moves, you know, it moves every now and then. So, uh, I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't believe me, look it up. Go to, go to the university, and um, go to the university, and you'll see that they, they, they put trackers in you, and uh, if they call the police, and they, uh, it's an alert. So if they call the police, they'll know where you at, because they said I got dementia, but I don't have dementia. I remember Dawn said she couldn't find her mother, and they put a tracker in Darlene. <laughs> They probably put a tracker in Darlene because I looked on her phone and I, I, you could see she was at she was standing over there by McDonald's. And I I looked on the map, the Google map, and I said, she's standing over there by McDonald's because I looked on her phone. Then I seen uh, Jimmy in back of the phone or on the phone or whatever. So, yeah. So, so I said... <laughs>
<laughs> I said, what? I said, Jimmy, what you doing on on the phone? You know, I said, what you doing on the phone? I don't know what they, do, they doing on the phone. I guess he trying to make it in to be bishop or something. I don't know. And yeah, I, I tell him good luck if that's what he want. Yeah. Half the time that stuff ain't worth two cents. Uh, okay. You know, some 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 people are trying to uh be uh some people try to do um um they try to do a lot of um you know uh stuff but um I don't know what they put in I don't know what they put in my stomach but I know it's to keep my stomach bloated. I don't know what they doing with my stomach. And your stomach can go down and uh um I don't know because these these people they 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 want you to go in in the knife and uh, want you to go in in the knife and get you a, a surgery and my see my doctor said if I if I stop doing you know eating uh, eating high cholesterol foods I don't have to worry about my weight going up because I never had a weight problem but the reason why some people say, oh, you're thyroid. So when I had my checkup done in 2009, my niece-in-law took me. And when they checked my throat, again, they checked the device, I mean, the band that I had. So they were trying to say that my thyroid, they said my thyroid was good, 2009. Then I, they checked it again when I was in uh, JFK. So JFK took a x-ray and they said everything is good Miss Holmes the the thing is still there so the, the Jamaican guy the African guy he said yeah you took their money uh she said they you took their money you got their money I said what money you know and he said no 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 he said he said you're you're smart you know <laughs> so so I guess they trying to sell whatever they whatever they got in me they trying to sell you know, because I wrote a poem, and it says, um, the poem says, a girl from the gutter. He said, now you need me to save the companies. So uh, Apple, um, I had read in the newspaper that Apple was recalling uh, some of the phones. And some of the phones was uh, being um, made the wrong way. And... Uh, I, like I said, I never had an Apple phone, so you gotta understand that. Never had an Apple phone, so um, my 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 daughter, she she's trying the Apple phone. The design of the Apple phone is my design, so the iPhone is my design. So uh, the the Samsung and the iPhone is my design, and I built a cloud for my, you know. For my internet and it's called it actually has to be a cloud when you turn your computer on steady having the window sign it's a cloud sign and you have to it's it's a cloud sign and it's just like how windows is but it's a cloud and this these cloud this cloud is it's a folder it's a filing cloud so you, you're going to have all of these windows you're going to you're gonna have these windows, which meaning uh, Notepad. It says Notepad, um, Art World. It, it says Art World, meaning that you can. It's it's like you can actually do art. You know, what I'm saying you can pick your colors and the toothbrush. I mean the 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 um the art brush and stuff. So um, I had a I had designed a. It's called a ease 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 um electronic e e ray electronic and it's a um a easel you know how you have the easel the painting um thing uh this one is electronic one and the electronic one is just like the electronic easel is uh you you um it's just like the easel but it's electronic board and you you pull it up you pull it up it's like a little stand and you pull it up and you take the you take a uh it's electronic brush electronic brush and you can 
paint and you you click on you click on the board and you got your little paint settings your little paints and then what you're going to do this is how you're going to use the brush it's electronic brush and you're going to tap it and then you're going to draw you can still draw it's just like a, a regular paint brush and then what you're going to do is if you want to erase just push the erase and you know but you can actually draw with it and it's a um electronic brush and it's it got a little marble piece where you glide it on the thing it's like a chart it look like a chalkboard but it's actually a screen it's a touch screen and you just drawing but it's um it's a easel easel and then you it's a um it comes in it's like a little little thing and you pop it up it's like a big old screen you pop it up right and then you let the stand out it's a kickstand you let it out and then it'll it'll stay there but you have to what you have to do if you want to print out your artwork you have to you have to plug the you have to plug the printer up it plugs into a printer so the printer is the only thing you're gonna need in paper so this printer is it do it does like a 10 by a 10 by 10 uh, a 10 by 10 you could do an 8 by 8 and or you could do different ones but it's an easel it's just like an artist that you know painting so what you do is you just get the paper and you put it in the printer and it you push you stroll down click it's a, it's a touch screen you stroll down you click and then it'll print out <clears throat> and then the picture will come out and then you can hang the picture, get a picture frame, hang the picture up, and you got your picture. So that's how that works. But it's it's a technology device. It's a tech tech um, electronic device because I kind of figure paint gets everywhere, and um, you can actually draw, you know, and it's actually you know real colors, good colors, and stuff, and. Uh, I just kind of figure, and you know how they have like the, it's like a little, um, you can do, it could be like a five, a five by, a five by five, or you can do a five by, like a five by six, and what it does is just a, it's just a case, and you pop it up, and then the, 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 the thing comes out, because the front acts as the front legs, and when you pop it out, the screen has a long, a long um, a third leg, and you just unfold it, and that's your that's your stand for the back of the easel, and it stands up, and then you just paint, and then when you finish, uh, pull the stand up, pop it back in the back, and slide it down back into the case, and you, you go. <laughs> that's your easel you know it looked like a little big old briefcase like you know so uh so that's that's what i drew but somebody stole my bag so i couldn't i couldn't take it to the invention the convention um place i couldn't take it to the convention place and they had one uh this past not this summer but the summer before then they had one and uh i couldn't get in touch with none of the people to uh to get get it going get the to get the device made you know so because it, it costs it costs a lot of money but uh, i was willing to you know i was willing to eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches get this one made <laughs> so i had uh but all it is is doing the technology but i was trying to get in touch with uh my friend uh he's um he's a technology um uh, he's a, a computer um, wizard, basically, and I needed him to design my wizard for my softwares. And this this wizard uh, software is 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 for cameras. Uh, I needed a wizard camera because you load up and you hit uh, you hit the you plug up the camera and then it'll pop up wizard and then you click on it and then it'll download. Uh, it'll download and um, if you want to have your stuff on your computer or your laptop or whatever but um, you can also send it to a printer you can also send it to a printer uh, so 
I like sending it to the printer. So, <laughs> so what you would have to do with these these um, these um, cameras is you have to create your 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 Facebook and stuff like that. It actually creates your own Facebook, you know, and you just click on it, and um, it loads up to your whatever pictures you're taking. And what you do is you just load up to the Facebook, just hit boom, and it'll load up to your portfolio on your Facebook. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, you can actually do a video and send it to YouTube, uh, but you need, I I was trying to get in touch with Google Chrome uh, to take on that task with the cameras. Uh, the Google Chrome, because you need a Google Chrome, because I guess it's made by Google, uh, Google Chrome to YouTube. So so I, I wanted to get in touch with them to kind of make the wizard for the camera and uh, the camera itself can load up to YouTube. You know, you can actually push YouTube camera and then it'll load up to YouTube. But you have to have a YouTube account through Google Chrome. So it's like getting in touch with them, letting them do the wizard for the cameras, the, the, the Tycon cameras, because all of my guys are called Tycon. But um, it, was, it was called Tycon. The cameras and the laptops and the desktops is called Tycon. T Y I C O N Tycon. So um and then the the windows for that was called the cloud. So I thought about the cloud. And the cloud is just files and data. You know, and data is used, you know, you can you can uh float data. But only thing is the cloud keeps it in the cloud. You know what I'm saying? And you can go back into the cloud, just click file. And then it's just like my computer, you know, uh, C, C or E or whatever drive you put it on. You know what I'm saying? But it's the cloud. So you got file one, file two, or like you got file A, B, and C. It's the same thing, you know. So, but you got drives. So you have to create the cloud drives. And the cloud drives can hold up to, each one can hold up to 100 files per, you know, but but it has to be a bigger gig. So so if you selling, uh, if you do the cloud, if you're going to do Tycon, Tycon devices, uh, computer cloud has to be at least between 36 to 38 gigabytes because that's the only way that you can, you can create each cloud file, you know, that, that can hold a hundred or, or between 50, you know, uh, between 50 uh, files. And and uh, steady doing that, um, and it's like data, you know what I'm saying? So I just kind of figure if you can do it that way, but it's called the cloud. So these, cl these cloud, it actually stays in the cloud. You do, you, all you have to do is click on cloud file. It's called cloud file. Click on it, and you'll see one, two, three. It'll, it'll be like numbered, you know what I'm saying? But it'll say, it'll say cloud one, cloud two, cloud three, you know what I'm saying? So you just click on it, and it, it'll show you all of the drives. And it'll tell you all the halves in these drives. So if if the one of the drives had not been used, then you have to remember which drive you put it in. That's what you got to remember. So you you have uh, between 38 to 36 gigs. You can have up to four drives that holds between 50 and 75 files per. You know, so and it's good. And then you you can run your you can also search. So your engine search of your internet is through uh, cyber. You know, because you know you can catch cyber. It's like you can still search the internet because the internet is internet. It don't matter. So uh, you you can do, still do internet. You just have you have to, you have to use another server for internet. You know, so so trying to. Um, search the internet and get in database and it's just like um how you say uh it's like building a brain database brain and it's so quick 
and it's, it's called fast internet and, and the brain operates so fast that as soon as you type it in it automatically know where to go you know so routing so that would be um well that would be a challenge so i don't know but yeah okay um i just wanted to come on in and say that and uh I gotta have a good day. Um, oh, um, can somebody please let me watch YouTube? I'm trying to watch to you YouTube and I can't do it because someone keep blocking my page and stuff. And the volume is not on. See y'all later.